Father, we thank you Baba once tunakush- again. Baba tunakushukuru mara nyingine tena. We come before your throne of grace. Tunakuja mbele ya kiti chako cha neema. We appreciate your love and your mercy. Tunakushukuru kwa ajili ya upendo wako na rehema zako. Thank you for the morning service. Asante kwa ajili ya ibada ya asubuhi. You spoke to our hearts. Ulinena na mioyo yetu. We thank you now that we are back again. Tunakushukuru sasa kwamba tumerudi tena. Speak to our hearts once again, O Lord. Inene mioyo yetu mara nyingine tena Bwana. We pray in the name of Jesus. Tunaomba katika jina la Bwana Yesu Kristo. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. Mnaweza mkaka. Um, so we want to have uh, more of a talk. Kwa hivyo tunahitaji kuwa na mazungumzo zaidi. Uh, instead of a, a service service eh tofauti na ibada kama ibada um, you know it's always a blessing to talk to the youth unajua daima imekuwa ni jambo la baraka kuongea na vijana anybody that is under 40 is a youth mtu yote ambaye uko chini ya miaka 40 ni kijana you know david had a lot of wives unajua daudi alikuwa na wake wengi sana but when he was under 40 you would say i praise god with my voice above all the voices of my youth <laughs> Akasema ninamtukuza Mungu zaidi kwa sauti yangu kuliko uh, zaidi ya oh, sorry above, um, above all my youth. Za, juu zaidi ya ujana wangu. So, so even even at that age being married and everything he was still calling himself a youth. Eh sasa hata katika umri umri ule pamoja na kuwa alishao alikuwa anajiita mwenyewe kijana. Praise the Lord. Eh um, So the youth are very important. Kwa hivyo vijana ni wa muhimu sana. Because uh, you are what makes the church keep going. Kwa sababu ninyi ndio mnaolifanya kanisa lisonge mbele. You are special. Ninyi ni wa, watu maalumu. And every time I get a chance to talk to the young people. Kila wakati ninapopata fursa ya kuongea na vijana Uh, I always tell them that uh, you, you don't wait until you are married to say if I'm married I'm going to serve God. Huwa daima nawaambia kwamba msisubiri kusema ngoja kwanza mpaka nioe ndio nitamtumikia Mungu. It's not going to happen. Hilo halitakaa litokee. The the Bible says Biblia inasema those that are single wale ambao hawaja hawajaoana hawajao au kuolewa see how they can please God. Wao tazama jinsi wanavyoweza wakampendeza Mungu. But those that are married. Lakini wa, okay wale ambao hawaja oa wao wala kuolewa wanatafuta namna gani ya kumpendeza Mungu. Uh, Lakini wanapooa au uh, kuolewa those ones they, they see how to please their husbands or their wives. Wao sasa wanaanza kutafuta namna gani ya kuwapendeza waume zao au wake zao. So if you are finding it difficult to pray. Kwa hivyo kama unaona ni vigumu kuomba when you are still alone wakati bado uko peke yako it's not going to be easy haitakuwa rahisi when you now have other people there wakati utakapokuwa na watu wengine because those other people they are not coming into your life kwa for sab- a service kwa sababu hawa watu wengine hawaji maisha ni mwako kwa ajili ya huduma they are coming there for serious business wanakuja <laughs> pale kwa ajili ya mambo makini so you must save god now kwa hivyo inakupasa umtumikie mungu sasa yeah, with the strength of your youth kwa nguvu za ujana wako Uh, I am still a youth myself. Mimi mwenyewe bado ni kijana. Uh, but I'm a youth that God has found favor. Lakini mimi ni kijana ambaye Mungu amenipa majaliwa. Amen. And I'm very conscious. Na kwa kweli ninajali sana of uh, the challenges of being a youth. Uh, changamoto ambazo zinawapata ya changamoto za kuwa kijana. Uh, when you are a youth, unapokuwa kijana, the greatest challenge is to take advice. Changamoto kubwa zaidi ni kukubali ushauri. Because the spirit of our age is the spirit of thinking that you know everything. Kwa sababu roho ya kizazi hiki chetu tulicho ni roho ya kufikiri ya kutaka kuona kwamba unajua kila kitu. So in everything you you listen to answer not uh, to to benefit. Kwa hivyo kila kitu unasikiliza ili utoe majibu sio kwa ajili ya kunufaika. Uh, because we are living in, a, in, a, in an age of intelligent people. Kwa sababu tunaishi katika wakati ambao ni wa watu wenye akili sana. because you see your parents are, don't know nothing about phones. Sa- sababu unaona kwamba wazazi wako hawajui chochote kuhusu simu. You know how to format it and to load WhatsApp and everything. Wewe unajua namna ya kuiformati na kupakua vitu mbalimbali na kila kitu. 
So when the elders are talking to you, wakwa hiyo wazee wanapoongea nawe, you saying what, what is it that they know? Utasema wanajua nini hao? So uh, we want youth that are in the message. Sasa tunataka vijana ambao wako katika ujumbe not in the passage. Sio katika kupita, sio katika mpito. So you must be in the word. Sasa mnapaswa muwe katika neno. So I want to talk about choices. Kwa hiyo nataka nizungumze kuhusu Yohana sura 6, John 6. Uh, choices. Choices. Ah yeah. kuhusu uchaguzi. I want to talk about choices. Nataka kuzungumzia kuhusu uchaguzi. Uh, so let's open uh, Ecclesiastes uh, eh, chapter 11. Kwa hivyo hebu tufungue kitabu cha eh, muhubiri sura ya 6. I, I don't see there's a brother I don't see you. Oh, Yuko wapi ndugu nani? Wakipawa yule. Ulikuwa unanisumbua? I was he was disturbing me not seeing him. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Yeah, take your position, brother. You see, the pastor has got you at heart. <laughs> uh, That's good. Uh, okay. Muhubiri. Uh, chap- chapter 11, verses 8. It's fine, pastor. It's all right. You don't have to stand. Chapter 11, uh, 11 verses Verse. 8. Verses 8. Soma, um, sura kumna moja msari wanane. Naam, mtu wakiishi miaka mingi na aifurahi yote lakini nazikumbuke siku zijazo za giza kwa maana zitakuwa nyingi mambo yote yajayo ni ubatiri uh, verses 9 wewe kijana ufurahie ujana wako na moyo wako uka, ukuchangamshe siku za ujana wako ukaziende njia za moyo wako na, ki, na katika maono ya, uja, ya macho yako lakini ujue wewe ya kwamba kwa ajili ya hayo yote Mungu atakuleta ukumuni. Praise the Lord. Um, Bwana asifiwe. So uh, I think you may be seated. You may need to find way to read him. Maybe he can give you his uh, uh, Okay, I will find the Bible it. yeah. So Kwa hivyo uh it says but if a, if a man lives many years kwa inasema mtu akiishi miaka mingi and rejoice in them all na aifurahie yote let him remember the days of darkness hebu na akumbuke siku za giza for they shall be many kwa sababu hizo siku za giza zitakuwa nyingi and that cometh is vanity na yajayo ni ubatili so so god is saying if kwe, by the grace of God. Kwa hivyo Mungu anasema kwa neema ya Mungu uh, you happen to live uh, for kama, a long time. Kama itatokea ukaishi wakati wa kutosha. You should remember that uh, there are going to be days of darkness. Unapaswa ukumbuke kwamba zitakuwepo siku ambazo ni za giza. And the, the, the days of light are going to be little compared Na, to the days of darkness. Hizo siku za uh, za giza zitaku, za nuru zitakuwa chache kuliko siku Zagiza. Um, if you remember uh, it was Job. Ukama utakumbuka alikuwa ni Ayubu. He says the days of a man. Ambaye alisema siku za mwanadamu. That is born of a woman. Aliyezaliwa na mwanamke. They they are just a few. Ni ni chache. But they are full of sorrow. Lakini zimejaa huzuni. So in your life Kwa hivyo maisha ni mwako as a young person kama mtu kama mtu kijana if god is gracious kama mungu amekuwa ame amekupa neema that you live uh, past 70 kama utaishi zaidi ya miaka 70 uh, the challenge is the days your, your most of your days are going to be full of darkness changamoto ni kwamba uh, siku zako nyingi zaidi zitajaa changamoto and uh, the, the darkness can can so, represent the bad days of okay, life. Inamanisha giza. Na, na, na giza inamanisha wakati mbaya wa maisha. It can also represent uh, 
the days of not knowing God. Na inaweza pia kuwakilisha siku za kuto kumjua Mungu. If there is one thing I regret, kama kuna jambo moja ambalo nalijutia is not having met this message when I was younger. Ni kutokukutana na ujumbe huu wakati nilikuwa kijana zaidi. But if there is one thing I am grateful, lakini kama kuna jambo ambalo na ninashukurani nalo is I was not born in the message. Ni kwamba sikuzaliwa kwenye ujumbe. I am grateful because I was found out there. Nina shukurani kwa sababu nilikutwa kule nje. So I have something I can compare. Kwa hiyo nina kitu fulani cha kulinganishia. This message is a treasure. Huu ujumbe ni hazina kuu. You cannot compare it to anything else. Uwezi kulinganisha na kitu chochote. You know sometimes uh, you look at yourself. Unajua wakati mwingine unajitazama we mwenyewe. And, and you feel sorry for yourself. Na kwa kweli unajisikitikia. Uh, because maybe you are looking at other people in the world. Kwa sababu wakati mwingine labda unatazama watu huko ulimwenguni. It looks like they are enjoying. Inaonekana kana kwamba wana furaha, wana furahia. And you are not enjoying. Lakini wewe ufurahi maisha. It looks like they they know about life and Una, party. Unadhani ya kwamba wanajua, yani wanajua habari za maisha and doing all sorts of sins na kwa kufanya mambo hayo yote uh, if god is gracious kama mungu akikupa neema in a few years time katika miaka michache ijayo you are going to see your friends utaenda kuwaona hao rafiki zako that you think are better than you ambao unafikiria kwamba wao ni bora kuliko wewe you will see them they will look maybe 20 years older than you utakuta kwamba wanaonekana kama wana miaka 20 mbele yako it is the cruelty of darkness ni kwa sababu ya ukatili wa giza the days of men are full of darkness kwa sababu maisha ya mwanadamu yamejaa giza if you look at uh, pastor msuya ye, kama ukimwangalia mchungaji msuya hapa it looks like maybe he's just 39 years old anaonekana kama ana miaka 39 what is keeping him young like this nini kinachomfanya awe kijana hivi it's the message of the hour ni ujumbe wa saa if you are to see maybe his friends that he went to school with kama ukiwaona rafiki zake ambao walienda shuleni pamoja maybe their teeth are gone labda utakuta hata meno hawana it is true they are finished wamekwisha their hair is now white nywele zao zote zimeshakuwa mvi and the white is not of wisdom na hizo huo mvi zenyewe sio mvi za busara it's a wisdom it's the white of trouble ni kwa sababu ni mvi zinazotokana na shida if they come and try to whisper at you kama wakija na wajaribu kukunongonezea kitu mouth will be stinking wakikunongota kukunongonezea kitu midomo inanuka they don't even know when was the last time they brushed their teeth awakumbuki hata ni lini walipiga mswaki mara ya mwisho you are here is the grace of god kuwa hapa ni neema ya mungu you need to thank god for this message unapaswa umshukuru mungu kwa ajili ya huu ujumbe i was still very young when the message came to me nilikuwa bado kijana sana wakati ujumbe uliponijia i was 14 15 nilikuwa miaka 14 15 and 15 kati ya miaka 14 na 15 miaka 15 then the message came ujumbe ukaja and i received the message nikapokea ujumbe and you see with me uh, i only realized later that i have believed the message na unajua kwangu mimi nilitambua baadaye kwamba nimeamini ujumbe it was not like somebody sits with me and really explains things and i say okay i accept it sio kwamba mtu alikuja akakaa na mimi akanielezea alafu baadaye nikasema ah sasa nime nalipokea so uh, what happened okay let me give you a bit of that sasa uh, kile kilichotokea hebu ngojeni ni wape kidogo ushuhuda so, so what happened with me is Baibu, uh, we were at school kilichotokea kwangu tulikuwa shuleni and there was a brother at that school na kulikuwa na ndugu katika ile shule and he was not yet fully a brother na hasa alikuwa hajawa ndugu kabisa. So he came with with a spoken word book. Akaja na kitabu cha ujumbe. I think a number of them. Alikuwa navyo kadhaa. So uh, he he was coming from another class and joined our class. Kwa hivyo alikuwa anatoka darasa jingine akaja kujiunga kwenye darasa letu. So now he was very intelligent. Sasa yeye alikuwa mtu mwenye akili sana. But in this class I was more intelligent than everyone. Lakini else. kwenye darasa hili mimi niliwazidi wote. So when he came he was like my uh, my opponent. Kwa hivyo alipokuja akawa kama mshindani wangu. So I didn't like that brother. Kwa hivyo sikumpenda huyo jamaa. Because he was my competition. Kwa sababu sasa ni kama ameniletea mashindano. So so the teachers was <laughs> were on a strike. 
Kwa hivyo waalimu wa daima wangegonga. So there was no classes. Kwa hivyo hapakuwa na madarasa. And that brother uh, took out his spoken words. Kwa hivyo yule ndugu akachukua vitabu vyake vya ujumbe. And then he started tell, talking to a few people. Akaanza kuongea na watu wachache about a message called the end time message. Kuhusu ujumbe unaoitwa ujumbe wa wakati wa mwisho. So within no time the whole class sasa muda si muda was, darasa zima was gathering around the brother nilikuwa linamzunguka huyo ndugu and i was sitting in the corner alone na mimi nikawa na keti kule kwenye kona peke yangu and i was not happy because of that. na kwa kweli sikufurahia jambo hilo so I, i said what is it that is going on there nikasema hicho kitu kinachoendelea pale I, i need to see what's going on so that i can take that attention ninataka nione nini kinaendelea pale ili kwamba na mimi ni dake huo usikivu and bring it to myself alafu nijilete nijipe na mimi so i i saw him talking about revelation 10 kwa hivyo nikamsikia akizungumzia ufunuo sura ya 10 i had never been to church sikuwa kamwe nimehudhuria kanisa i had never read the bible kamwe kamwe nilikuwa sijawahi kusoma biblia so it's my first time kwa hivyo ni mara yangu ya kwanza to go and be hearing things about the bible and things like that kwenda na kuanza kusikia mambo kuhusu biblia na mambo kama haya we knew there were churches out there but i was not a part of them na nilijua ya kwamba kulikuwa na makanisa lakini mimi sikuwa sehemu yake so the brother himself did not really understand the message kwa hivyo ndugu mwenyewe hata hivyo alikuwa hauelewi ujumbe vizuri but he just thought this would be a good thing to talk about since the teachers are not teaching lakini aliwazia tu ya kwamba ni vizuri kuzungumzia mambo haya ambayo waalimu hawayazungumzi so he was reading revelation 10 kwa hivyo alikuwa akisoma ufunuo sura ya 10 i saw another mighty angel niliona malaika mwingine mkuu come down from heaven akishuka chini kutoka mbinguni clothed with a cloud akiwa amevikwa wingu his face was as it were the sun uso wake ulikuwa kama jua and his feet were as it were pillars of fire miguu yake ilikuwa kama nguzo za moto ah. eh. and then he says kisha now, akasema This this pillar of fire here. Akasema hii nguzo ya moto hapa. Is the same pillar of fire that led the children of Israel ni, out of Egypt. Ni nguzo ya moto ile 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 ambayo iliwaongoza wana wa Israel kutoka Misri. And he said Na akasema Here is a picture of the prophet. Akaleta hii hapa picha ya nabii. With the pillar of fire. Akiwa na nguzo ya moto. This is the same pillar of fire. Hii ni nguzo ya moto ile ile. So this is the prophet of the age. Kwa hivyo huyu ndio nabii wa kizazi. And he says this cloud here akasema na hili wingu hapa so he had a spoken word book kwa hivyo alikuwa na kitabu cha ujumbe the picture of the cloud ambacho kinaonyesha picha ya lile wingu and inside the cloud they had put at the face of Jesus na kisha ndani ya lile wingu wameweka kama sura ya Yesu and he said it appeared in 1963 akasema hili lilitukia mwaka 1963 this cloud is Christ akasema hili wingu ni Kristo ah and i can see the people were so enjoying that sasa nikaona watu wanafurahia So I said uh, no 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 no. Kwa hivyo nikasema hapana hapana. I said this man is is not explaining it the right way. Nikasema huyu mtu alielezei vizuri. Let me tell you what is really happening. Hebu ngojeni niwaambie hasa kilichotokea. So I took the picture of brother Branham. Kwa hivyo nikachukua picha ya ndugu zangu. I said you see this pillar of fire here. Nikasema unaona hii nguzo ya moto hapa. And this cloud. Na ni hili wingu. What happened is the light from the cloud was 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 going uh, was reflected in the cloud nikasema the pillar of fire was reflected in the cloud hii nguzo ya moto nuru yake ndio tu ilikuwa imerudisha eh, nuru yani imegonga kule ikaleta nuru nyingine kwenye ili wingu so so if you have light and you have a cloud kwa hili kwamba ukiwa kama una nguzo ya moto na una wingu then una ile nuru na ina wingu una wingu this rainbow there it is written here to say and the rainbow was upon his head basi hapo utakuwa una hii Uh, upinde wa mvua hapa ambapo walisema upinde wa mvua ulizunguka kichwa chake everyone clapped hands for me kila mtu akanipigia makofi they said ah this man wakasema huyu ndugu huyu mtu is explaining these books anaelezea hivi vitabu in an easy way for us to understand kaskaji ya rahisi zaidi kuliko ya sisi kuelewa zaidi and they told that brother that you should not talk wakamwambia yule ndugu sasa we usiongee let this one talk acha huyu aongee <laughs> And yet I knew nothing about the message. Na hata hivyo wakati huo nilikuwa sijui chochote kuhusu ujumbe. So, so after that now. Sasa baada ya hapo sasa. The brother approached me. Ndugu akanifuata. And he said, "Please." Akasema tafadhali. Uh, can I give you these books? Naweza kukupa hivi vitabu so that you can read them? Ili kwamba uvisome. And tomorrow na kesho you can come and tell the people. Uje sasa uambie watu. I said that's a good idea. Nikamwambia hilo ni wazo zuri. So <laughs> 
So I took the books. Kwa hivyo nikachukua vile vitabu. And I I was now, you know, reading the books. Sasa unajua nikaanza kuvisoma hivyo vitabu. Ah, and then I hear brother Agan Bright. Nikakuta habari za kina ndugu Agan Bright. We were in the mountain hunting. Jinsi tulivyoenda mli wanasema tulivyoenda mlimani kule na kuwinda. And I'm reading the broken English there. Na nilikuwa nasoma Kiingereza ambacho akijanyoka mle. I said my friend no this Ni, books Nikasema ndugu zangu ah hivi vitabu not helping me Hivi vitabu havinisaidii I just want things that are simple <laughs> Nataka vitu ambavyo mambo ambayo ni rahisi so that I can explain to these people. Ambayo naweza kuelezea hao. So I said here is your books. Nikamsema vitabu vyako hivi hapa. I'm going to read the Bible. Nitaendelea kusoma Biblia. So that day I went and looked for the for a Bible in the house. Kwa hivyo siku hiyo nikaenda nikatafuta Biblia nyumbani. And then I found that old English the little the simple version. <laughs> Nikaja nikakutana na Biblia ile ya kale kabisa ina Kiingereza rahisi so, na, na chepesi. So I was reading the gospels. Kwa hivyo nikao nasoma zile injili. Trying to maybe read the story so that i can come and nikijaribu kusoma hizo hadithi labda naweza nikapata kitu fulani na kuja na kuambia watu i read those stories the parables of jesus nikaenda kwenda kusoma ile mifano ya yesu brother ndugu i did not understand sikuelewa i realized the bible is very hard nikabaini ya kwamba kumbe biblia ni ngumu sana I came to my friend I said my friend Nikaja kwa rafiki yangu nikamwambia ndugu rafiki yangu I could not understand the books Sikuweza kuelewa vile vitabu and I could not understand the bible Na sielewi biblia So I can't explain to the people Kwa hivyo sina cha kuelezea watu Then he says let's go to church Akasema twende kanisani He says let's go to church. Akasema twende kanisani. I said no you go to church. Akasema mimi nikasema. Hear what they say. Wewe nenda kanisani. Explain it to me. Alafu usikilize wanachosema. And I tell it to the people. Uje unielezee. Alafu mimi niende niwaelezee watu. So he says no let's go to church. Akasema hapana twende kanisani. I said where is the church? Nikamuuliza kanisa liko wapi? He says the church is in town. Akasema kanisa liko mjini. I said mm, Nikamwambia ah hapana. Me I don't like churches which are in town. Mimi sipendi makanisa yaliyoko mjini. Because where we grew up we're not in town. Kwa sababu mimi mwenyewe niliko kulia sio mjini. I said if I go to town the people Ni, have got money and things nisema, like Tukienda mjini watu wana pesa na mambo kama hayo. And I don't have money. Mimi sina hela. And he says no the people are not like that. Akasema hao watu hawako hivyo. Those people have love. Wale watu wana upendo. Eh, I said ah Nikasema ah I can't trust that. Siwezi kutuwezi kuliamini. Akasema watu wanaoenda kanisani mjini they will be wearing new clothes. Watakuwa wamevaa nguo mpya. Ah. Ah ah. No, I can't. Mimi siwezi. He says no, maybe let us go there you will find a good girlfriend. Akaniambia wewe twende tu unaweza ukapata mchumba mzuri. I said mm, mm, mm. you see girlfriends from town. Nikasema eh Mimi trying... msichana ra- rafiki msichana rafiki wa kike wa mjini I, I'm trying to talk to her N- nitajaribu kuongea naye she jumps into her father's car mara amenyanyuka anadandia kwenye gari ya baba yake and i'm busy typing with my feet alafu mimi naenda niki, nikichora chini na miguu yangu ah uh, it's not going to work akasema mmm hilo halitawezekana so he says okay fine akasema sawa basi I, i don't know how to convince you sijui namna ya kukushawishi but uh, that in that church lakini kwenye kanisa lile if you don't have money kama huna pesa for for bus fare hata kwa ajili ya uh, nauli ya basi the the deacons there they give you money mashemasi wanakupa pesa i said the church where they give they give nikasema eh kanisa ambalo wanawapa watu hela those people are satanists hilo ni kanisa la waabudu shetani You see I'm talking to my friend like that. Naongea na rafiki yangu namna hiyo. And then something just said you must try it. Ndipo kitu fulani kikaniambia. So I said okay. Jaribu tu. Let's go. Nikamwambia ah twende. And then we went. Ndipo tukaenda. And the pastor was preaching. Na mchungaji alikuwa akihubiri. And when the pastor was preaching was na, preaching on the blood text. Na wakati mchungaji alikuwa akihubiri alikuwa anahubiri kuhusu the blood blood tag. Eh that one on the ear of a cow. Aha okay sawa. Alikuwa akihubiri kuhusu kutia alama wanyama wale ngombe. So he says there was a ranger who, uh, who had cows. Akasema kulikuwa na mfugaji eh, mwenye ranch sehemu ya kufuga wanyama ambaye alikuwa na ngombe wake. He says and these cows had blood tags here. Na akasema hawa ngombe walikuwa wamewekewa hivyo vipini. Now this is my alama first. Alama za vipini hivyo. 
first message in my life. Sasa huo ndio ujumbe wa kwanza niliyoupata, ngombe kutiwa alama. He says so he was rounding up the cattle to put them in a crow. Akasema alikuwa anazunguka ana ana anazunguka na ngombe kuwaweka katika lile sehemu yao. Yeah, so so he's sitting by the gate where the cattle are getting in. Yeye alikuwa na keti pale langoni ngombe wanapoingia ndani. He says so he was watching at the blood take. Sasa alikuwa anaangalia kila ngombe anayeingia lazima waangalie ile alama ya tuseme ya uko wake kwa, kwa maneno mengine he said he was not concerned about anything else sasa asema yule alikuwa hajali chochote kingine he says even the color of the cattle could all be the same anasema rangi ya ngombe ingeweza kuwa ile ile wamefanana he says but he was not concerned about whether their skin is the same lakini alikuwa hajali hata kama ngozi yao ni inafanana he was saying he was looking at the blood tape. anasema yeye anaangalia tu ile kile kikipini walicho kile alama aliyowekewa he says the blood tag is what would determine whether it's a genuine heifer or a fake one anasema ile alama ya sikioni ambayo amewekewa ngombe ndio ingeweza kutambulisha ya kwamba ni ngombe wa ukoo halisi au ni mwingine asiyofaa he said we might be sitting all of us here akasema tunaweza tukua tumeketi wote hapa and yet god is only wanting to speak to one person na ukakuta kwamba mungu anataka kuongea tu na mtu mmoja brother right at that moment Ak- ninakwambia ndugu mara ile ile i said i am that genuine nikasema mimi ndio huyo ngombe so he says and then he said are you here the preacher Aka- is preaching muhubiri akauliza upo hapa uh, are you here that is a genuine heifer upo hapa ambaye yule ngombe halisi wa uko halisi the church was a big church kanisa lilikuwa kubwa thousands of people maelfu ya watu i looked at all those people nikawaangalia wote hao watu i said all these people are fake nikasema hao watu wote hao wasio the only genuine heifer in this church yani ngombe wa wa uko halisi ni katika kanisa hili is me ni mimi even that preacher himself hata yule mhubiri mwenyewe i don't think he understands what he's talking about mimi sijui kama anaelewa anachozungumzia this is a serious matter what he's talking about hili ambalo ni ni jambo serious so i lift i stood up on my feet nikasimama nikanyanyuka miguuni mwangu and i said i am here nikasema nipo hapa and then the, the brother said to say hey, hey, sasa kuna ndugu akaniambia wewe wewe sisi sisi don't sit down chini you are embarrassing una, us now unakoroga watu brother ndugu that conviction huo ushawishi of saying this message was for me ya kwamba ujumbe huu ulikuwa ni wangu from that day kuanzia siku hiyo until today mpaka leo hii there is no one hakuna mtu that can tell me anayeweza kuniambia that this message is for someone else kwamba huu ujumbe ni wa mtu mwingine if you tell me there are twelve people that are going in the rapture kama ukiniambia kuna watu 12 watakao ingia kwenye mkuu mimi ni wa kwanza If this message does not mean that much to you. Kama huu ujumbe hauna maana sana kwako. You have not believed it right. Bado hujauamini sawa sawa. I said God created all these other brothers. Nikasema Mungu aliumba hao watu wengine wote. Just to accompany me to church. Wanisindikize kanisani. Not for they are just helping me so that I don't feel lonely. Wananisaidia tu ili nisijisikie mpweke. But otherwise the real person the real deal. Vinginevyo hasa mtu mwenyewe. Yaani mpango mzima. This is me. Ni mimi. I am the real deal. Mimi ndio mpango wenyewe. You as a young person. Wewe kama kijana. You've got to come to the same place. Inakupasa ufikie mahali hapo hapo. Where you say I am the real deal. Mahali ambapo utasema mimi ndio mpango mzima. Where the pastor Patrick is here or is not here. Mchungaji Patrick awepo au asiwepo. The deacons are here or they are not here. Mashemasi awepo au asiwepo. Even if the other brothers are sleeping during church. Hata kama hao ndugu wengine wanalala saa za ibada. Don't worry. Usijali they accompanied you to church wanakusi walikusindikiza tu kanisani from that day kuanzia siku hiyo i never missed the church sikuwahi kukosa kanisani so i started preaching sikukosa ibada na nikaanza kuhubiri the day i received the message siku ile ile niliyopokea ujumbe i preached it before i knew what it was nilihubiri nililihubiri kabla sijalijua now i knew the truth sasa najua ukweli They are teaching us at Sunday school. Wanatufundisha kule kwenye Sunday school. They are teaching us at church. Wanatufundisha kanisani. Shorts are for women. Eh, uh, kaptula za wanawake. That's for women. Hizo kuvaa kaptula, mwanaume kuvaa kaptula ni kuvaa nguo za wanawake. I'm like, yo. Nikasema, "Eh, watching television." 
kuangalia television it's like you watching the devil there ni kama kuangalia pepo pale you mm. must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ lazima ubatizwe katika jina la bwana yesu kristo and that friend of mine na yule rafiki yangu we we used to compose songs i had about 16 songs that were written tulikuwa tunatunga nyimbo tulitunga kama nyimbo 16 uh, of the world about love nyumba nyimbo 16 za ulimwengu kuhusu mapenzi and we were about to record them na tulikuwa karibu tu record but uh, when the message came ujumbe ulipokuja that stopped hilo lilikoma we put it aside tukatupa pembeni and i remember my friend was now trying to you know he thought maybe the message would be too hard na unajua rafiki yangu alikuwa anajaribu kuonyesha kwamba labda ujumbe utakuwa mgumu sana so he is trying to say no maybe we cannot watch tv but we can play some video games in yeah, the shop somewhere inawezekana sawa tusiangalie tv lakini tutacheza hizo game tu mahali fulani kule sokoni uh, i didn't know much sikujua mengi but i told him i said ah, lakini nikamwambia ah i don't think if god doesn't want us to watch that thing he will allow us to play this thing uh, kwamba kama mungu hauturuhusu tutazame hicho kitu sidhani kama ni sahihi sisi kwenda kukicheza and i remember one day he came wearing shorts na nakumbuka siku moja alikuja amevaa kaptula shuleni uh, when we had civic day where you are allowed to wear your clothes wakati tulikuwa eh uh, we were receiving a civics day you know they ilikuwa ni siku ya wake. siku ya nani ya ya, ki, ya nani siku ya ki, ya jamii yani tu walikuwa yani tuseme ni siku ambayo eh, ni, ni ya kijamii yani mnaruhusiwa kuvaa nguo za nyumbani so he came with his short kwa hivyo akaja na kaptula yake and i had just discovered the scripture that the lord hates to see the legs of a man sasa ndio nilikuwa nimetoka kusoma andiko ambalo linasema maandiko ya ruhusu kuangalia miguu ya watu and i blasted him nikamkemea it didn't matter hai haikujalisha whether he is the one who had brought the spoken Bamba word baba ni yeye aliyeniletea vitabu vya ujumbe i blasted him nilimlipua and he said ah you know there's you know there's nothing wrong and akasema wewe unajua hamna tatizo na nini i was not in the message to impress somebody sikuwa kwenye ujumbe kwa ajili ya kufurahisha mtu I mean the message because of I believe it. Niko ndani ya ujumbe kwa sababu na uamini. And you know that brother I was at his wedding uh, just a, a, a month ago last month. Na unajua huyo ndugu nilikuwa katika harusi yake mwezi uliopita. I married before him. Mimi nilioa kabla yake. 7 years plus ahead of him. Miaka 7 si, nyuma kabla yake. He is not a pastor, I'm a pastor. Yeye sio mchungaji, mimi sasa ni mchungaji. Doesn't matter brother. Haijalishi ndugu. The message is not is not uh, it's not about who gave it to you. Ah uh, ujumbe hauna uhusiano na ni nani alikupa. It's about you who has received it. Ina uhusiano na wewe ulioupokea. I pastor people that are twice my age. Nina wa, mimi ni mchungaji kwa watu ambao wako mara mbili ya umri wangu. Some of them are even older. Baadhi yao hata ni wazee zaidi. 84 years old. Miaka 84. I pastor them. Na wachunga. They come wanakuja. And sit and say pastor. Wanakuja na kuketi na kusema mchungaji. Yes our issue tuna tatizo hili help us tusaidie i passed i i baptized my own mother nilimbatiza mama yangu mwenyewe the, the one who, who gave birth to me yule aliyeniza this message is a reality huu ujumbe ni halisi and the reason why i baptized here na sababu ya mimi kumbatiza i don't think it's much about the preaching that i did sio kwa sababu ya mahubiri mengi ambayo nilifanya i believe she must have seen christ in my life naamini kwamba ni kwamba aliona kristo maishani for her to be convinced ili yeye apate kushawishika to say i'm living the methodist aseme kwamba mimi naachana na umethodisti and follow the message of the hour na nifuate ujumbe wa saa amen amen so this is because a certain young man made a choice sasa hii ni kwa sababu kijana fulani alifanya uamuzi today we are blessed alifanya chaguo lake in 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 mwanza leo tumebarikiwa hapa mwanza because of a choice kwa sababu ya uchaguzi today i am preaching to you leo nawahubiria because you also have made a choice kwa sababu ninyi pia mmefanya chaguo you see you, you, you had a choice today unajua mlikuwa na chaguo leo not to come kutokuja you had a choice mlikuwa na chaguo i believe you have many clothes in your wardrobe najua mna nguo nyingi katika makabati yenu but you said ah i don't want to wear this oh lakini mlisema sitaki kuvaa hii i'm going to wear this nitavaa hii there's many chairs today 
Kuna viti vingi leo. But you said I don't want to sit here. Ukasema sitaki kukaa hapa. I want to sit here. Nataka nikae kwenye hiki. Life is about choices. Maisha ni yanahusiana na chaguo. And every choice we make. Na kila uchaguo chaguo tunalofanya there is a consequence. Kuna ma, kuna kuna matokeo. Now the Bible says here Biblia inasema Rejoice O young men in thy youth. Furahini enyi vijana katika ujana wenu. And let thy heart cheer thee in thy days of thy youth. Na mioyo yenu ifurahie siku za ujana wenu. And walk in the ways of thy heart. Na mtembee katika uh, njia ya uchaguzi wenu. And of thy sight. Uh, sorry. And of walk. thy flesh. Uh, Uchangamshe siku za ujana. The, uh, Ukaziendee njia za moyo wako na katika uh, katika maono ya macho yako in the sight of thine eyes yes na katika maono ya macho yako on chapter 12 it says katika sura ya 12 inasema remember now thy creator in the days of thy kumbuke muumba wa siku za ujana muumba wako siku za ujana wako while the evil days come not kabla azijaja siku zilizombaa no the years draw high wala haijakaribia miaka unaposema when thou shall say mimi sina furaha I, have, I have no pleasure in Mimi sina furaha katika hiyo. The Bible is saying. Biblia inasema serve God. Mtumikie Mungu when you are still young. Wakati bado wewe ni kijana. When you still have strength. Wakati bado una nguvu. Brother Branham says most of the young people come to the Lord. Ndugu Branham anasema uh, wengi wa vijana wanakuja kwa Bwana before the age of 21. Kabla ya miaka 21. You see God does not want a, a, an old finished person. Unajua Mungu hataki watu ambao wameshazeeka na wamechaka. When you don't have strength anymore. Ambapo huna nguvu tena. When you don't have power even to say amen. Huna hata nguvu za kusema amina. You can't walk around to testify. Huwezi kuzunguka huko na ushuhudie. Unless you want to say oh no brothers and sisters. Maana utaanza kusema sasa ndugu na dada. I want to serve the Lord now. Nataka kumtumikia no, Mungu. No, no, sasa hapana no, no. hapana don't do that usifanye hivyo don't give god change usimpe mungu change no give him the actual dollar mpe dola halisi give Hela him your pesa halisi as a youth mpe nguvu zako ukiwa kama kijana yes save him with your strength mtumikie na nguvu no, kwa nguvu zako not when you are done and dusted so, so wakati umechoka umekwisha listen the bible says why the sun inasema, or the light wakati jua au nuru or the moon or the stars au nyota na mwezi be not darkened visi uh, visipoti uh, vinapotiwa giza no the clouds return after the rain e, mawingu yasirudi baada ya mvua so that when he's talking about the light and the moon and the stars wakati anapozungumzia kuhusu e, nuru na mwezi na nyota he's talking about the eyes anazungumzia macho it's saying when they are not yet darkened Anama, anasema kabla hayaja hayajawa mazito you need to serve god when you can still read your bible inatakiwa mtumikie mungu wakati bado unaweza kusoma biblia yako without putting it here bila kuiweka hapa bali serve god mtumikie mungu while you can still read wakati ambapo bado unaweza kusoma he says in the day when the keepers of the house anasema katika eh, katika siku za wale walinzi wa, wa nyumba shall tremble wa, walinzi wa nyumba watatetemeka and, and the strong men verse, bow themselves verse 12 uh, uh, chapter 12 verse verses 3 uh, verses 3 Siku ile walinzi wa nyumba watakapotetema and the strong men shall bow themselves hapo wenye nguvu watakapojiinamisha and the grinders cease cause they are few na wasagao kukoma kwa kuwa ni, ba, ni haba eh hey, there's nothing anymore here hakuna kitu tena you like you are now just drinking mtindi you can't eat meat sasa wakati huo umeshakuwa mzee unaweza tu kunywa mtindi huwezi kula nyama the grinders are few kwa sababu He said, meno, meno ya kusagia nyama machache. He says save God when you still have your teeth. Anasema mtumikie Mungu wakati bado una meno yote. When you can still smile at the camera. Ambapo bado unaweza ukatabasamu mbele ya kamera. Not when we say smile and you're like <laughs> Sio wakati tukisema hebu tabasamu mtabasamu wewe ndio kwanza unapenda. Save God now as a young person. Mtumikie Mungu sasa kama kijana. That's what the Bible is saying here. Hivyo ndivyo Biblia inavyosema. He says and the doors shall be shut in the Inasema streets. Inasema wakati milango itakapofungwa uh, itakapofungwa uh, barabarani and the sound of grinding is low. Na siku 
and he shall rise up at the voice of the bed and all the daughters of music shall be brought low na milango kufungwa katika njia kuu sauti ya kinu itakapo kuwa ni ndogo na mtu kusituka kwa sauti ya ndege we have not reached there ok continue so so So, so it's talking about now you're hearing now. Sasa hazungumzi kuhusu kusikia kwako. When a small thing is now irritating you. Wakati jambo dogo linakukera. So if there's some chaka chaka noise here. Kwa kama kuna sauti fulani hivi ya chaka chaka. You get affected. Wewe tayari unaathirika. But at the same time your hearing also is low. Lakini wakati huo huo unasikia ikiwa chini. If we meet you and you say God bless you brother. Tunakuja tunakutana na wewe na kuambia Bwana akubariki ndugu. You say huh? Unasema eh God bless you brother. Tusema Bwana akubariki ndugu. Eh? eh? The, grind, the hearing is low. Kwa sababu kusikia kumeshuka. God now. Mtumikie Mungu sasa. When you can still hear nicely and properly. Ambapo bado unaweza kusikia vizuri na It's a na, choice na, you have to make. Sawa. Ni uamuzi ni chaguo ambalo unapaswa ufanye. And for that choice. Na kwa chaguo hilo. There is a consequence. Hapo sasa kuna matokeo. Is that right? Nilo ni sawa? There is a reward for every choice. Kuna thawabu kwa kila chaguo. Brother Branham says. Ndugu Branham anasema. In the message by faith Moses. Katika ujumbe wa kwa imani Musa. He says now Lot one time had to make a choice. Anasema sasa Lot wakati mmoja alipaswa afanye uamuzi. It may Afanye, au afanye chaguo. It it may be this morning there will be men and women sitting here. Inafanya asubuhi ya leo kuna wanaume na wanawake walioketi hapa. That will make your final choice. Hiyo itakupa wewe chaguo lako la mwisho. You are today. Wewe upo hapa leo uh, because uh, several years ago kwa sababu miaka mingi iliyopita you chose to be what you are now. Ulichagua kile ulicho sasa. You can refuse that. Unaweza ukakataa jambo hilo. But that's the truth. Lakini huo ndio ukweli. If you go to school kama ukienda shuleni and you have friends that say let us bank lessons na una una unakutana una na rafiki zako ambao wanasema hebu na tuvai uh, what bank let us not attend hebu okay hebu tusihudhurie so while others are in class you are busy basking on the sun kwa hiyo wakati wengi wengine wako darasani wewe huko umekula chimbo and smoking weed and drinking a little bit umekula chimbo huko unavuta bangi na vitu kama hivyo you know what unajua nini when the years for school are finished si, shu, wakati muda wa shule ukiisha your friend will go back to their house rafiki zako watarudi nyumbani you go back to your house na wewe utarudi kwenu but the choices you made lakini ulile chaguo ulilolifanya even if you and your friends may never meet hata kama wewe na rafiki zako hamtakutana. Your choices will follow you. Lakini ule lile chaguo ulilolifanya litakufuata. It will follow you. Litakufuata. I, whether they stay in South Africa or Hata stay wawe in, in Tanzania. Afrika ya Kusini au Tanzania. The choice will follow you. Lile chaguo ulilofanya litakufuatilia. So brother Branham says. Kwa hivyo ndugu Branham anasema. And what you choose now? Kile unachochagua leo. Maybe you have made wrong choices. Inawezekana umefanya uchaguzi mbaya. But today I'm saying. Lakini leo unasema. What you choose today? Kile unachochagua leo will determine kitaamua what you will be five years from kile ambacho now. utakuwa miaka mitano baada ya leo and, and, and says, na ndugu branham anasema five years from today miaka mitano kuanzia leo you brother may be a missionary wewe ndugu unaweza ukawa missionary five years from today miaka mitano baada ya leo you sister may be a renowned christian wewe dada unaweza ukawa mkristo maarufu or five years from today au miaka mitano baada ya leo you may be in hell unaweza ukawa kuzimu Today you can choose. Leo unaweza ukachagua. To say while we are saying what we are saying. Kusema kile unachosema, kusema a, kile utaka, unachosema. Is a liar. Unaweza unaweza kuchagua kusema chochote. Sema huyo ni muongo. Ni it, ni chaguo. You can choose to say I will never change. Unaweza ukachagua kusema sibadiliki. I will keep having boyfriends. Mimi nitaendelea na kuwa na wavulana. Uh, I will never Nijana change. Wakiume. Marafiki wa kiume si badiliki. I will keep having fornication. Mimi nitaendelea na uasherati. Don't worry. Usijali. Five years from today. Miaka mitano baada ya leo. We shall see you with a baby. Tutakuona wewe na vikitoto. Enaubino. 
Tena katoto kenye utaza, utaza albino. God will make sure that you have that child. Mungu atahakikisha kwamba unapata albino. Because of the choice you are making today. Kwa sababu ya uchaguo unalolifanya leo. Rather five years if God has ordained you also to save save him. Kama Mungu amekuchagua wewe umtumikie. Remember God does not have uh, substitutes. Ujue Mungu hana vibadala. If, if you are supposed to save God. Kama wewe inakupasa umtumikie Mungu. You are going to save him by fire by force. Itakubidi umtumikie but, kwa mbinde kwa kwa liwa, uh, kwa mbinde yani kwa vyovyote vile. Whether you like it liwake or not. Jua, liwake jua inyeshe mvua. God, Uwe unapenda au upende. You are, you are going to save him. Mungu kama anataka umtumikie utamtumikia tu. The, the, the problem is just Tatizo ni hili hapa. Your choice Chaguo lako might determine the condition in which you are going to save him. Litaamua kuhusu ni hali kwa hali gani utamtumikia. There was a brother from Zimbabwe. Kuna ndugu mmoja kutoka Zimbabwe. Went to South Africa. Alienda Afrika Kusini. And while he was in South Africa. Na wakati akiwa Afrika Kusini. He joined himself to the wrong company. Akajiunga na kundi la watu wabaya. And the pastors were telling him. Na mchungaji alikuwa akimwambia. You better stop this behavior. Ambia, Afadhali ukomeshe tabia hii. And you are neglecting your family. Na wewe unaidharau familia yako. Come back here. Hebu rudi. And another pastor said. Ndugu uh, ndugu mwingine akasema. You, you are actually a child of God. Wewe hasa kwa kweli ni mtoto wa Mungu. And you are going to save him. Na utamtumikia. But you might have to save him in a terrible state. Lakini una, unaweza ukamtumikia katika njia ambayo ni ya mau ni maumivu So while they were there he joined a company that was stealing you see those transformers the electricity transformers Sasa siku moja wakati walikuwa wamekaa na hiyo kundi chini ya transformer kama ile ya umeme There is oil in those transformers Sasa kwenye ile transformer kuna mafuta So they would take oil from those Kwa hivyo walikuwa wanaiba mafuta ya transformer So one day Sasa siku moja He was just a driver of these people that take oil Alikuwa yeye ni dereva wa hao watu ambao wanaiba mafuta ya transformer So the driver does not get much Sasa dereva apate apewe kingi and slowly but surely he started learning how to do it. Sasa kidogo kidogo akaanza kujifunza namna ya kuiba mafuta ya transformer. And one day they said you brother Sasa siku moja wakasema wewe ndugu must get oil from that big transformer. Inakubidi wewe ukachukue ukaibe mafuta kwenye ile transformer lile kubwa. And the day that he wanted to do that Na hiyo siku aliyotaka kufanya hivyo. The power was on. Umeme ulikuwa umewa, unawaka. Brother it threw him. Umeme ukamtupa. And it crippled him ukamfanya awe kilema broke his legs ukavu, akavunja miguu avunjika miguu akawekwa kwenye kiti cha magundumu akaja kanisani i now want to save god Kazima, sasa nataka nimtumikie mungu you are going to save god utamtumikia mungu tu kwa vyovyote but better make the right choices lakini ni afadhali ufanye uamuzi sahihi because sahi. you might save him on a wheelchair kwa sababu unaweza ukajikuta unaenda kumtumikia ukiwa kwenye kwenye gari la magundumu U- uamuzi au uchaguo unalolifanya sasa mm, choices you make uchaguzi unachaguo unalolifanya today you, in five years from now you Miaka can be mitano, kutoka leo tutakuwa na missionary five years from now you may come to our church and preach for us Miaka mitano ijayo huenda ukaja kanisani kwetu na ukatuhubiria. Oh five years from now you can be in the hands of the devil out there. Au miaka mitano ijayo unaweza ukajikuta huko mikononi mwa shetani mahali fulani. We will meet you and you, when you see us coming this way. Tutakutana na wewe na unapotuona sisi tunatokea njia fulani. You, you, you run uh, like this. Unakimbia namna hiyo. And you'll be like ndugu 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 ndugu. Tutakuita brother brother brother. Ndugu will be disappearing like, like he's in a theophany. Huyu brother atatoweka moja kwa moja. Make the right choice. Fanya chaguo sahihi. Listen to what brother Branham says. Sikiliza kile ndugu Branham anasema. He says five years from today. Anasema miaka mitano kutoka leo. You may be cleaning spittoons in a barroom. Unaweza ukajikuta ya kwamba upo unafanya usafi kwenye kwenye vyo vya ba. Five years from today. Miaka mitano baada ya leo. You may be a prostitute on the street. Unaweza ukajikuta umekuwa kahaba barabarani. But you got Chagudoa. Sorry, to, niweke vizuri. Chagudoa. You, you, he says, "Oh, you may be a man or a woman that's a credit to the society." Au unaweza ukawa mwanaume au mwanamke ambaye ni heshima kwa jamii. Because of your choice of Christ. Kwa ya chaguo lako. Five years from today. Miaka mitano kuanzia leo. You may be in glory. Unaweza ukawa utukufuni. Gone in rapture. Mungu katika uh, unyakuo because of a choice. Kwa sababu ya chaguo. We all don't know when we are going to die. Hatujui sisi wote lini tutakufa. Some of us think we will live until I don't know. Baadhi yetu tunafikiria kwamba tutaishi mpaka hata sijui nini. But some will die. 
lakini baadhi watakufa when paul says we shall not all die that means some shall die kwa sababu paulo anasema hatutakufa wote lakini inamaanisha kwamba baadhi watakufa just like i also preach we shall not all die kwa sababu kama ambavyo ningehubiri kwamba sote hatupaswi kufa but some shall die lakini baadhi watakufa but five years from now lakini miaka mitano baada ya leo you may be in glory unaweza ukao utukufu you may be in the rapture unaweza ukao kwenye unyakuo but you've got to choose lakini inakupasa ufanye chaguo and don't look at what you see na usitazame kile unachokiona choose what you see by faith chagua kile unachokiona kwa imani that's the only thing that will count hilo ndio jambo pekee ambalo lina maana brother branham says ndugu branham anasema Sometimes in life wakati mwingine katika maisha we have to confront the, uh, the thing uh, just like this young man did Unaona inatupasa kuyakabili mambo kama watu walio wa Kristo wanavyofanya He says you have to uh, he's got to put you uh, put you the same thing so you can choose or reject Ah unaanasema anaweza akakuwekea kitu kile kile ili pa, kwamba upate kuchagua kuchagua kukichagua ama kukikataa you, you have a choice una chaguo let's look at some of them hebu tuangalie baadhi yao machaguo you have a choice as a young man una chaguo kama kijana whether to have an education or not kuwa na elimu au la you have that choice unalo hilo chaguo la you can want to be just not have it or just refuse to not to have it unaweza kufanya chaguo la kuwa na hiyo elimu au kutokuwa nayo or you women au ninyi wanawake you can be like a decent human being mnaweza kuwa kama wanawake viumbe walio wabora sana or you can be wazuri wasafi sana one of these weird creatures au unaweza ukawa kama au hivi viumbe ambavyo ni vya kutia huruma that we have out there them blue eyes wenye macho yaliyo si macho ya namna gani so so brother Branham is saying you can choose ndugu Branham anasema Uh, unaweza ukafanya chaguo what whatever you want ah, chochote ya chochote kile unachotaka in the book of proverbs it says kitabu cha nabii uh, prophet proverbs cha, kitabu cha zaburi kina sorry cha cha mithali kinasema it says the fear of the lord kinasema kumcha bwana is the beginning of knowledge ndio mwanzo wa hekima Amen. to fear god kumcha bwana we are now living in a day where people fear the pastor tunaishi katika siku ambazo watu wanamuogopa mchungaji more than they fear god wanamuogopa mchungaji zaidi ya vile wanavyomuogopa so you uh, see uh, you know maybe the song leader is singing inawezekana labda muimbisha nyimbo anaimba people are not interested watu wanafurahia but god is there lakini mungu yupo pale and then the moment the pastor stands here na kisha mchungaji anaposimama hapa Oh somebody starts lifting up their hands. Mtu fulani hivi ambaye wakati song leader akiwa hapa alikuwa hajali. Pastor akishasimama sasa anainuka ananyanyua mkono. Mungu wangu. Oh Mungu wangu Mungu wangu. All the time God was there you were not respecting him. Muda wote Mungu alikuwa pale wakati wa muimbisha nyimbo wewe ulikuwa haumheshimu. The fear of the Lord. Kumcha Bwana au kumuogopa Mungu Bwana. It's the beginning of wisdom. Ndio chanzo cha hekima to know that god knows what is going on in your life kwamba mungu anajua yale yanayoendelea moyoni mwako what you do in secret he knows it sirini anakijua that's why you must fear him hiyo ndio sababu inakupasa umuogope because he is the one who knows kwa sababu ndiye anayejua is that right je ni hilo ni sawa the other scripture says andiko jingine inasema the fear of the lord is the instruction of wisdom kwamba kumcha bwana au kumuogopa bwana ni uh, is there is the instruction of wisdom ndio ndilo hasa eh, tuseme ushauri wa hekima he says and before honor is humility eh, kabla kabla ya kabla ya heshima huja unyenyekevu so that means you can choose to have pride hivyo ni kusema kwamba unaweza ukachagua kuwa na kiburi and you can choose to be humble na unaweza ukachagua kuwa mnyenyekevu and if you want to be honored na kama unataka kuheshimiwa you need to humble yourself lazima uanze kwanza na kujinyenyekeza don't have pride usijaribu kuwa na na kiburi maybe you are the most educated young man inawezekana labda wewe ndio kijana msomi kuliko wote you want everyone to feel that unataka you are the most educated unataka kila mtu ajue kwamba wewe umesoma maybe you are the one who has got most of the money inawezekana labda wewe ndio una pesa nyingi everyone must feel that i've got kila most of the money kila mtu lazima ahisi ya kwamba mimi niko na pesa nyingi very disrespectful kwa kweli wewe huna adabu you don't respect elders hauheshimu wazee 
You know there is a way of saying ndugu to a, an elderly person. Unajua kuna namna fulani ya kusema ndugu kwa mtu ambaye ni mzee. Which is disrespectful. Um, kuna namna ya kusema ndugu kwa mtu ambaye ni mzee ambayo kusema huko ni kumvunjia heshima. You see I, I, I don't know here but uh, sijui lakini sijui uh, hapa lakini South Africa maybe. Kule Africa kusema pastor ni mchungaji labda. And then uh, but there's a way of calling him brother. Kuna namna fulani ya kumuita ndugu. Which 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 is which is disrespectful ambayo, of the office of a pastor. Ambayo huko namna unavyomuita ndugu ni kuivunjia heshima ile ofisi ya mchungaji. It's almost like you are calling him brother because you don't believe that he's a pastor. Ni kama tu unamuita ndugu kwa sababu hauamini kama yeye ni mchungaji. You are trying to reduce him to your level. Unajaribu kumshusha mlingane. Humility is important. Unyenyekevu ni muhimu. Humble yourself. Inyenyekeze. And humbling yourself is is not putting your head on the shoulder. Na kunyenyekea unyenyekevu wa kweli sio kufanya hivi. No, it's putting yourself in the word of god ni kujiweka mwenyewe katika neno la mungu that is humility huo ndio unyenyekevu if there is something that needs to be done kama kuna jambo fulani ambalo unapaswa lifanywe and the pastor says the, the, the youth na mchungaji anasema vijana please remain behind hebu bakini you and you are not married na wewe na hujaoa you, au hujaolewa you are downstairs there talking to everybody and wewe uko busy unaongea na watu wengine kule stay you are a youth Kaa wewe ni kijana. Humble yourself. Put yourself down. Jiweke chini. If you humble yourself, kama ukijinyenyekeza, there is honor. Kuna heshima. If you look at the youth that are given opportunity even to speak to other youths in our church. Kama kuna vijana ambao wanapewa fursa ya kuongea na vijana wengine kanisani kwetu is the last people that you ever think that I would give them an opportunity. Watu ambao ni vijana ambao ukija kanisani kwetu. If, yeah. Paru. Wait. Kama ukija kanisani kwetu utakuta ya kwamba vijana ambao wanapewa fursa ya kuongea na vijana wengine ni watu ambao usinge wawazia. It's, it's the humble ones. Ni wale ambao ni wachini kabisa. Those that know to respect. Wale ambao wanajua kuheshimu. When we say safe it starts at this time. Ukisema ibada inaanza saa hizi. They are there at that time. hapo katika wakati huu. When we say Friday we have a prayer meeting. Tukisema tutakuwa na ibada ya maombi. They are there at that prayer meeting. Wapo hapo katika wakati huo. It's not this ones that is pride. Sio hao ambao wana kiburi. You see he feels himself he is not in church. E, anajisikia na hayupo kanisani. But he is posting 20 pictures on his WhatsApp status. Alafu yani hajaja ibadani lakini anatuma mapicha chungu zima kwenye status yake. Hey, what is wrong with this kwenye person? WhatsApp. Unajiuliza, huyu mtu ana matatizo gani? So you have a time to post but you don't have a dollar to give in church. Kwa hivyo wewe una pesa za kutosha ku kurusha mapicha kwenye WhatsApp lakini huna senti ya kueleta sadaka kanisani humble yourself ninyenyekeze you need to humble yourself inakupasa ujinyenyekeze because honor comes with humility kwa sababu uh, heshima huja baada ya unyenyekevu the bible says biblia inasema it is better to hear the rebuke of the wise ni vema kusikia kemeo la wenye hekima than for a man to hear the songs of fools kuliko mtu kusikia nyimbo za wapumbavu Did you hear that? Mlilisikia okay. vizuri hilo. So so here is what it is saying. Hiki ndicho linachosema. It, it is saying ilinasema hivi. I know sometimes young people you like to listen to funny music. Najua ya kwamba ninyi vijana wakati mwingine mnapenda kusikiliza nyimbo za ajabu ajabu. And by funny music I mean gospel music. Na ni, mimi ninaposema nyimbo za ajabu ajabu hata hivyo na maanisha hizo hizo mnazoita muziki wa injili. Okay. How can, how can gospel music be funny? Let me show you. Yasa, mziki wa injili unawezaje ukawa wa ajabu ajabu? The scripture Wee says it is better to listen to the rebuke of the wise. Biblia inasema ni afadhali kusikiliza kemeo la mwenye hekima than for a man to listen to songs of fools. Kuliko kusikiliza nyimbo za wapumbavu. So it's not the song. Kwa hivyo tatizo sio wimbo. It is the fool that is singing. Tatizo ni kwamba linaimbo huo wimbo unaimbwa na mpumbavu. I love that. So you are having somebody who's who's got lipstick. Sasa una mtu hapo ambaye amejaza marangi ya mdomoni. 
and all the mtindi is out like that alafu na mitindi ya kale ime iko melala alafu hallelujah praise god and you are driving closing your eyes we una na we unaendesha gari also a fool we una unaendesha gari unachekelea hii wewe nawe ni mpumbavu mwingine you also a fool wewe pia ni mpumbavu because you are listening to songs of fools kwa sababu unasikiliza nyimbo za wapumbavu even if a fool sings only believe i don't listen to his song hata kama mpumbavu akiimba Amini tu bado ni mpumbavu sikilizi I won't listen to it Sita msita sikiliza wimbo huo wa mpumbavu I would rather listen to a brother who cannot follow the tune Afadhali nimsikilize ndugu ambaye hata hawezi kufuatilia kuimba wimbo kwa kufuata mpangilio mzuri than to listen yani to ana, a yani fool yani anaboronga wimbo anaimba kwa kuboronga so today lakini afadhali kuliko kusikiliza huyo mpumbavu anaimba vizuri kwa hiyo leo nendeni mkadilite hizo nyumba za nyimbo za wapumbavu delete 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 kafuteni nyimbo za wapumbavu choices you make chaguo utakalolifanya some of these songs do you know they they are played in in, in beer halls mnajua ya kwamba baadhi ya hizi nyimbo zinaimbwa kwenye maba how can a christian song be played in hebu niambieni wimbo kweli wa kikristo utaimbwaje ba there's a song you see this one is just to excite the flesh unajua ni baadhi ya nyimbo ambazo kazi yake ni kusisimua tu mwili there is no message in the song hakuna ujumbe ndani ya wimbo huo just repeating jesus jesus jesus, jesus jesus yesu yesu what yesu, yesu. about jesus Wao kuhusu nini Yesu kuhusu nini? And remember your Jesus is not our Jesus. Kwanza kumbuka kwamba Yesu wako sio wetu. Your God is not our Wala God. Mungu wako sio Mungu wetu. If he is the same. Kama ninyi ni kama ninyi ni sawa nao. He is supposed to bring you to this message. Kama yeye ni sawa na sisi basi anapaswa aje kwenye huo ujumbe. Make a choice. Fanya chaguo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need the right kind of influence. Unahitaji aina sahihi ya ushawishi. Don't be like Rehoboam. Msiwe kama Rehoboam. Rehoboam is the son of Solomon. Rehoboam ni mwana wa Selemani, wa Sulemani. He took the kingdom from his father. Na alichukua ufalme kutoka kwa baba yake. And there was elders in the city. Na kulikuwa na wazee katika lile jiji. And they said, "Please." Wakasema tafadhali. Don't be hard. Usiwe usiwe nani mkatili like your father was kama baba yako alivyokuwa mkatili and then he said uh, okay i am hearing you akasema vema nimewasikia but after that lakini baada ya hapo the bible says and the poem went to consult with the young people he grew up with huyo rehoboam akaenda kuomba ushauri kwa vijana ambao alikuwa nao waliokuwa pamoja let me put a comma there hebu niweke comma hapo The Bible says confess your faults one to another. Biblia inasema ungamanieni dhambi zenu ninyi kwa ninyi. That one to another is not you. Huyo ninyi kwa ninyi sio ninyi. It's not you trying to look for your friend there. Sio wewe kujaribu kumwangalia rafiki yako hapo. And you already know your friends. Na tayari unawajua ni rafiki za unawajua say, rafiki hey, zangu. Unasema rafiki yangu? I, I committed a doubter again. Rafiki yako. Eh, hey, si nimezini tena. Ah, 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 ah. That is what Rehoboam did. Hicho ndicho Rehoboam alichofanya. He avoided the elders. Aliwakwepa wazee. And he went to talk to his friends. What Aka is your enda, friend going to tell you? Akaenda kwa marafiki zake. Wewe unategemea rafiki yako atakuambia nini? Me too I'm struggling. Atakwambia mimi mwenyewe napambana. Eish. Ah the devil is trying us. Eh hey, I say shetani. Shetani anatucheza anatujaribu. Sasa hebu tushikane mkono tuombe. That a doctor is still with you. Huo uzinzi gone anyway. Huo uzinzi bado mnao. Hauendi kokote. Brother Branham says there are Branham offices anasema, that are ordained. Kuna ofisi ambazo zimepakwa mafuta to handle confessions. Kwa ajili ya ku, uh, kushughulikia hizo toba hayo maungamo. If you go to just anybody in the church and tell your story. Kama unaenda kwa mtu yeyote tu kanisani na umwambie. Don't blame the pastor if your story is now in the newspaper. Usimshanga, usimlaumu mchungaji ukakuta hizo habari zako ziko kwenye gazeti la udako. The day you are going to fight with your friends. Siku mta, hiyo siku ndio mtatandikana ngumi na rafiki yako. He's going to say ah, but you you, you committed adultery. Like you. Wewe we ulizini. You remember how many times? Four oh, times wewe you come back up mara nne si ulizini. Ah, you can't rebuke me after oh. all the repentances that you have. Wewe usinikemee, uwezi kunikemea mimi ni, 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 ni wewe ni zaidi. Uh, sister you you told me about your abortion. Sasa wewe si dada si uliniambia na wewe kwamba umetoa mimba. No no you want to sister sister. Dada dada. Sister. Dada. That's why there's a pastor. Ndio sababu kuna mchungaji. Who can handle your 
issues. So, so don't be like Jeroboam. You must take the right kind of influence. When he went to his friends, the friends said, what are the elders saying? Says the elders are saying I'm hard. He says you must be even hard. You make it harder for them. Show them who you are. He came and made things harder in Israel. Until ten tribes of Israel. Hadi makabila kumi ya Israeli. He had to leave and went under Jeroboam. Yakaamua yakaamua kuondoka na kwenda chini ya Jeroboam. And he was only Jeroboam. left with two. Aka yakamkimbia akabaki na makabila mawili. And his behavior na tabia yake gave birth to idolatry. Ikazaa uabudumizimu. Because Jeroboam had to create fake gods for them to Kwa worship. Kwa sababu them. Ilibidi sasa Rehoboam huyo atatengeneze Mungu wa uongo ili kuridhisha watu. Taking wrong influence. Kwa sababu ya kuchukua ushawishi mbaya. We will put you into idolatry. Kuchukua ushawishi mbaya kutakufanya uwe muabudu sana. Get the right kind of friends. Pata marafiki wanaofaa. If you have a wrong friend. Kama una rafiki mbaya. You are going to be in idolatry and you don't know it. Utakuwa muabudu sana bila kujijua. What is idolatry? idolatry na kuabudu sanamu nini is when you have something more important ni wakati una kitu fulani ambacho ni cha muhimu zaidi than serving god in front of you uh, zaidi ya kumtumikia mungu aliye mbele yako you know there are sisters yani, oh, sorry mm. ni wa, ibada ya sanamu ni nini ibada ya sanamu ni wakati ambapo una jambo fulani ambalo unafikiri kwamba ni la muhimu zaidi kuliko kumtumikia mungu ambaye yuko mbele yako They are sisters. Kuna baadhi ya wadada. You start associating with wrong sisters. Wanaanza kuwa na ushirika na wadada ambao ni wabaya. They put the spirit of fashion on you. Wanaingiza roho ya mitindo ndani yako. You're coming to church is no longer about saving God. Sasa unakuja kanisani sio tena kwa ajili ya kumtumikia Mungu. It's about his time. Unakuja kanisani kwa ajili ya It's about shoes and dresses. Kwa ajili ya maonyesho. Kuja kuonyesha viatu, kuonyesha nini? You are already in idolatry. Tayari wewe ni muabudu sana. Brother Dugu. make the right kind of friends Ebu pata If you sahi. get the wrong kind of brothers in okay. your life kama unao ndugu ambao uh, ni wabaya maisha ni mwako put pressure on you um, watakushinikiza until you start worshiping other things baka utajikuta unaabudu vitu vingine badala ya Mungu the bible says be not deceived Biblia inasema usidanganyike if company de- destroys good habits kama uh, uh, anasema hivi msidanganyike tabia tabia mbaya no, sorry maneno mabaya uharibu tabia brother brother says show me your friends ndugu brother anasema nionyeshe marafiki zako show me the pictures in your room nionyeshe picha zilizoko chumbani kwako let me see the music that you listen to hebu nione muziki ambao unausikiliza and i will tell you whether you are a christian or not nitakwambia wewe ni mkristo au la you you can't tell me that I'm I'm a sister in the message. Wewe sikuniambia kwamba mimi ni dada kwenye ujumbe. And all your friends are boys. Lakini wewe ni dada wa ujumbe. Lakini mbona rafiki zako wote ni wavulana? Ah ah. You have the demon of prostitution. Una pepo wa wa, 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 wa ukahaba. Why do you need all those boys for? Kwa nini wewe unataka hao wavulana wote? Ni wa nini? Why? Kwa nini? Make friends with sisters. Fanya urafiki na wadada. Today Leo delete kawadiliti wafute Ah the sisters are not saying amen Sasa wadada hawataki tena kusema amen Sisters amina. I say delete Nasema hivi wadada nilisema hivi mkienda nyumbani futeni <laughs> Ah it's still weak Bado amen yenu This ni, amen ni, ni nyonge sana nyonge sana Sisters delete Wadada futeni Okay Yeah sawa hiyo sawa Brothers Ndugu, ndugu futeni. Yeah. That one is strong. Yeah, that one is better. Hiyo <laughs> imekuwa nzuri. Hey, but usually these ones that say more amen they will not delete. Hawa <laughs> wanaweza <laughs> wakasema amina kubwa zaidi alafu wasifute. Yeah. We must delete. <laughs> Lazima tufute. Yeah. Amen. Brother has got only sisters as his friends. Unaona? Ndugu ana dada mmoja tu kama rafiki yake. He's like the rooster of the church. 
Yeye eti anakuwa kama yeye ni kijogoo wa kanisa. All the sisters are his sister wives. Yaani uh, wadada wote ni ni wake uh, sisters sorry. Are, are his wives. His yani wadada wote ni kana kwamba ni wake zake. Chiki 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 he's on this one. Chiki chiki chiki. Yaani sasa hivi yuko na huyu ada kamili yuko na huyu. You have a devil. You have una una pepo satan in your heart shetani yuko ndani ya moyo wako must come out lazima atoke if you don't say amen it becomes obvious that i'm talking about you. Sasa, kama you say ya, amen you eh, can cover it kama usemi amina unathibitisha ya kwamba hilo liko ndani yako <laughs> lakini ukisema amina hata kama lipo utakuwa umeli, umelifunua you must be clever at least hey best hebu tuwe wajanja tuseme amina don't show that you are now thinking too much about it eh hey, usikae unalifikiria fikiria sana <laughs> amen amen praise the lord let's let's close eh hey, bwana sifiwe hebu natufunge consult your elders eh hey, omba ushauri kwa wazee wako stay away from questionable things kaa mbali na mambo ambayo yanazalisha maswali. Brother Branham went to a certain place. Ndugu Branham alienda mahali fulani. And uh, he says it was like a mountain area. Na nasema ilikuwa ni kama mahali pa milima milima hivi, ni kama Mwanza. So there will be a, a man that has, has got a little carriage with a horse. Kwa hiyo akakutana na mtu fulani alikuwa na mkokoteni fulani unaovutwa na farasi. So you sit you sit at the back. Kwa hivyo uh, unaketi kule nyuma. And uh, you know so there will be driving riding the horses down the mountain alafu angekuwa wanaendesha au farasi kushuka mlima so that you can see the view of the whole city ili kwamba uweze kuona mji mzima vizuri and the gorge you know it's like in a valley pia uone yale nani mapango fulani kama 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 mabonde fulani so so brother branham uh, meets this young man na ndugu branham akakutana na huyu kijana and uh, he says brother come come get in my Kasema, carriage eh hey, ndugu eh, ndugu ndugu njo panda kwenye mkokoteni wangu he says i can ride very fast akasema mimi naweza kuendesha kwa kasi and i will be right on the edge na mimi nitakuwa naendeshea huku you, kando kando kabisa ukingoni huku you can see the whole city yani wewe mimi wakati naendeshea ukingoni utakuwa unaona jiji you lo. will enjoy na kuambia utafurahi vibaya sana anasema mm. Akasema mm. what about you the other one Akasema wewe mwingine vipi The other one said ah I I I drive fairly fast not very fast Huyo mwingine akasema mimi naendesha lakini sio kwa kasi sana uh, but uh, I will not be on the edge Lakini pia sitapitia huko ukingoni I will be far from the edge Nitakaa mbali na ukingo but uh, you will see the city Lakini hata hivyo utaona mji And brother Brandon says Ndugu Branham anasema I will go with the second one. Nikasema nitaenda na huyu wa pili. This one that is fast and on the edge. Huyu ambaye ana mwendo kasi na anatembelea kando kwenye ukingoni. Is dangerous. Huyu ni hatari. Even though he's saying I'm dangerous but I'm careful. Hata kama anasema mimi ni hatari lakini I am dangerous uh, but I'm careful. It's dangerous ni, but I'm careful. Anasema ndio mimi ni hatari lakini niko makini. Brother Branham says it's not how close. Ndugu Branham anasema si si kiasi gani umekaribia uko karibu you get to sin without sinning si yani si vile ambavyo unakaa karibu na zambi lakini huzi, hufanyi dhambi he says but it's how far you stay away from it anasema la muhimu ni vile unavyokaa mbali na hiyo dhambi we see you with a, i don't know do, 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 castle lager do you have castle lager here eh tuna ile inaitwa castle lager beer Beer. Yeah. A bottle of beer. Ile chupa ya beer. And then you put water in the bottle of beer. Alafu unaweka maji katika chupa ya beer. Brother, ndugu, stay away from questionable things. Kaa mbali na vitu vinavyozalisha so maswali. Sasa you can drink it but brother. Ah, huko ndani sio beer, ni maji tu ndugu na kunywa. It's better you get a, stay away. It's not tu. how close ah, you asema. are without sinning. Kaa mbali na jambo hilo. Si si vile unavyoweza kukaa karibu nalo bila kufanya dhambi. Kaa mbali nalo. Sister your dressing. Dada mavazi yenu. It must stay away from the world. Yanapaswa yakae mbali na ulimwengu. Stay away from questionable things. Yakae mbali kaa mbali na vitu mambo ambayo yanazalisha maswali. If there is a question about it. Kama kuna swali kulihusu. Stay away from it. Kaa mbali nalo. Let it be your motto. Hebu na iwe ndio uh, moto yako au msemo eh? tunahitaje moto your slogan 
Now, now you see, kama hicho. this is the trap of the old Eskimos. Unaona kwa sababu huu ndio mtego wa wale wa, wa mbilikimo wa zamani. The old Eskimos would put uh, would put fish. Wale mbilikimo wa zamani wangeweka samaki. And then they would they would they would remove the skin of the fish. Alafu wanamchuna samaki ngozi. And the blood of the fish would be you could see the blood. Alafu unaweza kuona damu ya yule samaki. And uh, then you would have wolves that would come. Ah uh, ndipo sasa uh, what a wolf kungekuwa na wolf yes wolf what do you mean uh, the wolf is uh, the, those animals that look like dogs ah uh, ah uh, okay wolf. ah oh, okay okay mbwa mwitu no 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 uh, the sisi tunaita wolf oh wolf uh, uh, okay uh, so wolf, wolf. <laughs> <laughs> wolf. <laughs> wanakuja wale sasa au mbweha and then, au mbwa mwitu so they will be coming to eat the fish Kwa hivyo wale mbweha wanakuja kula wale samaki. So so what the Eskimos do they put Kwa hivyo wale stick here. Wa Eskimo wanaweka fim kijiti hapa and then they put a fish. Afu wanaweka samaki. And the 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 the, the, the wolf like loves blood. Na kwa sababu huyo wa mbwa mwitu anapenda sana damu. So it comes and it licks the blood of that. Kwa anakuja anaanza kulamba damu ya huyo samaki. And then it, they put another stick Afu wanaweka fimbo kijiti kingine. They put blood again. Wanaweka damu tena. And they lick and finish. Na huyu mbwa mwitu anakuja analamba anamaliza. And they put another another stick. Wanaweka kijiti kingine. But they put a knife. Alafu wanaweka kisu. And then they put blood. Alafu kile kisu wanakipaka wanaweka damu imekifunika kisu. So the last of the wolf for Fahiyo, blood. Hatua ya mwisho ya huyo uh, mbwa mwitu kufakamia damu it will lick the last part atalamba ile sehemu ya mwisho and it will finish the blood na atamaliza damu and it will cut its own tongue lakini atakuwa amejikata ulimi wake mwenyewe because mwenye. it's still seeing blood kwa sababu bado anaona damu it will keep licking anaendelea kulamba until it dies mpaka anakufa kwa sababu iko hivi ngoja wait analamba alafu kile kisu kinamkata damu yake mwenyewe inatoka inajaa kwenye kisu anaendelea kulamba kwa sababu anapenda damu mpaka anafia hapo <laughs> this is what the devil does hiki ndicho shetani anachofanya that little thing that you love so much jambo hilo dogo ambalo unalipenda sana the devil puts a knife shetani anaweka kisu kwa and you keep licking wewe unaendelea kulamba and licking unalamba until you don't know mpaka hata hujui the blood is now your blood damu sasa kumbe inayoendelea pale ni damu yako mwenyewe you never realize it hutagundua jambo hilo until the eskimo is standing next to you mpaka mweskimo anakuja amesimama kando watching the wolf lick Ana, its own blood akiangalia mbwa mwitu akilamba damu yake mwenyewe may god be gracious to you mungu na awe wa thamani kwenu to make the right choices ili mfanye mfanye chaguo lililo sahihi mungu awabariki sana mungu awabariki sana